referencing this video, I think it's important to point out that I do not consider myself a fan of the Fallout franchise. I have not played any of the Fallout games with the exception of Fallout Shelter. And it was very cute, but obviously much more simplistic. When I saw the trailer for Fallout, I didn't really think anything of it. I'm a little bit jaded when it comes to certain movies and TV shows. I know that I had no dog in the fight really when it pertains to the story because I don't know the lore or the story of the Fallout franchise. But everyone's watching it, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna give you guys my honest opinion so follow me on this journey to the Fallout show. In this specific video, I'm going to be reviewing episode one. Minding my business, one out of an orange colored sky. So we're introduced to who I call that Southern guy because every time I see him, I absolutely love this guy and I can never remember his name. He's just that Southern dude, but he's a darn good actor. And the first thing I'm thinking is this is obviously set. I mean, I don't know if it's an alternate universe or if it is in our universe in the past. I don't know where this is. I don't recognize the background or the cityscape. Yeah, what is happening? Because I'm kind of confused. I'm bad at history because I'm looking at the people and I know that in our world in the past, we would not see this wonderful rainbow depiction of people together. But then again, these guys are really rich, but then again, people kind of kept to their own shades if this is indeed in our timeline and universe, which makes me believe that it's not, which is the reason why everybody is just mixing and matching, which is cute, but if they're going for historical accuracy, I understand it would pull some people out of the immersion, but if it's a fictional universe, then it doesn't really matter. So I was a little bit confused because every other movie I've seen like this, they usually are really accurate with the depiction of demographics, I should say. But whatever, after I realized what was happening, I was just enthralled by the relationship between the father. <laughs> ever oh my god I love her and I knew I'm like okay the fact that they chose the cutest little girl in the world I knew something bad was gonna happen I just knew it and at first I thought these guys were making fun of him because oh his child's mixed but it can't be because everyone is mixed here so something is going on in the news but the mothers want to change the news so everyone can just enjoy the party so they are like no it's a happy day let's just ignore just for a little while what's going on out there probably should not have ignored the news <laughs> Why wouldn't you do it? The thumbs up. Oh, it's, uh, that's grown up stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'll stop. I swear to God, like, God damn it, man. Why are they doing this? I know exactly what, I knew at this point what was gonna happen. Then he tells her, you know, when I was in the Marines. If they ever drop a really big bomb, so it's to hold up your thumb just like this. And if the cloud is smaller than your thumb, now you run for the hills. And if it's bigger than your thumb? They told us not to bother running. We're shadowing. So baby cute kitten girl is like, oh no, something drops in the horizon. And she's like, is it your thumb or mine? And I love the reveal here because then you realize, holy crap, that is way bigger than your thumb. This is going to be a problemo. This scene, the intro of this is some of the best cinematics I have seen. The suspense, the buildup, they drag you in right away. I'm all in at this very moment. Then the shock wave comes. Holy crap, the attention to detail there. This thing dropped so far away that it took almost a minute. I mean, maybe I, it's hard to scale time, but it took so long for just the shock wave to reach them. Reminds me of that scene from Dinosaur. I did a review of that so you guys can go check that out if you wish anyways so everyone is running for their lives this is horrifying and it's so sad because they have a bunker and this guy's best friend is like let us in and he's like no bro get the hell away from me and his little girl is standing back here and i thought that was so horrible because those two 
are best friends. But then as my husband was telling me, the shelter, they probably only have enough. He only has enough for just his family. So if he lets extra people in, he they risk everybody starving. I can understand from a father's perspective, making that choice to protect his own. But man, I don't know. In that situation, maybe that's why certain people have to make certain decisions because I cannot see myself with my best friend and her little girl waiting out there or their little dog because I don't have actual children. But there's only two of them. And me just being all like, no, bro. That's your best friend. That's like your brother. Like, oh my God, I can't. No, 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 no. To my own detriment, maybe. I cannot see myself doing that. And this, to be fair, this guy probably couldn't either. No. I know myself very well. I've been in those situations, life or death, and I put myself on the line for people that I love to the point where I almost died. So I, I can't, but then again, I understand. Oh, that was, that scene alone. And that poor little girl, she's, oh man. And those people, they're all away. Now they probably all have bunkers at their homes, but they're far away from their houses. One of the things that I always look at in movies like this or shows or scenes is everyone has the utmost class and decorum until something happens and all of a sudden we're just apes. We don't care anymore about class. You can see the buildings just dropping behind them and you're like, okay, maybe he can make it to his house. Maybe they have a bunker at their house. And I'm like, it's possible they might die, but his, his, his horse has to go along the road. It's a winding road. And then another bomb drops. Okay, it's farther in the distance, <gasps> but another one even closer drops. Another one, another one. Another one. Oh my god, then there's just nukes dropping everywhere. And I'm like, damn, what in the world? This one's even closer than the other one. They're dead. They're everyone there's dead. There is no way. Like, man. And we don't know who did it, but that's not important. Something happened. Whew! With that intro, that got me invested. And I'm expecting we're gonna see something interesting. Fallout that says 219 years later. This is where we meet Bush Baby Big Ol' Eye Lucy. I didn't think I was gonna like this character, but I actually fell in love with her. I like her so much that when something happens to her, I feel bad. Bitch, are you no, you're not shooting. Your eyes closed. Okay, maybe she has the other one open. I hope so. But she's the cutest person ever. It's just her and her dad and her brother. Oh look, it's the guy from Severance. So she's like, I haven't been able to find a suitable marriage partner, or at least one I'm not related to, because she's been spooking, spooking her cousin. And that's a normal thing because I guess there's not enough people. But they set up a marriage with her. Lucy. Her friend is pregnant and encourages her. And now they're ready for the arranged marriage. Of course, because they live underground, everything is a projection. And it's almost very believable. Her father couldn't be more proud. Well, I'd never step foot outside Vault 31. When did it go away? The moment I met your mother. Stare into my eyes, father! I'm sorry. It's like you're gonna fall in them things. They always see a flashback of her mom. <laughs> yeah, this one. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Why is she shaped like that? <laughs> I didn't know what this was at first. I thought it was a teddy bear or something. I think it's the hairstyle. Never mind. Whatever. So she goes to meet her partner. And we're all like, please, please let him be hot. And the cousin is like, I'm not gonna open the door. And he's pretending there's a malfunction because he's in love with his cousin. She's like, you know, when we were kids, it was fine, but that's not a suitable marriage partner. You know, we can't, we kind of have to variegate the gene pool. I need some fresh spermatozoa. So Vault 32 opens and they send out the, the freaking buck or stallion the leader comes out and she's like yeah there was a blight and we lost a bunch of people and the first thing i noticed is this person looks rough i'm like damn what did you got i mean y'all went through something clearly because you look like you're wearing father time on your face as a matter of fact most of the people behind her do except for the dude that turns out to be her husband oh shit damn okay so she is lucky auntie And she's like, God damn it. I got stuck with him. Freaking lollipop head over here. I'm sorry. <laughs> so the whole time, Liz, I'm sorry. The whole time, Liz, he's looking at me. He's eating like a freaking wildebeest. And she's like, <laughs> mm, your eyes are going to be inside my eyes soon. And look at these 
people. Like, did the brother, her little brother is like, y'all smell nasty as fuck. The father's making a speech for the marriage. Woohoo, cheer, oh, yay. Everything seems sweet and nice so far. She's dancing with her bow and he looks so handsome. That food looks good. What are they using to make it? Do they have whales down there? That's such a stupid question, I know. But whenever I see jello, I think of whales. I don't know why. I used to think that jello was made from whales. Like you shoot them and then they erupt and then they turn into like jello. That's not what actually happens, I know, but I don't know where the correlation with that came in. Then he's all like, baby, come, it's time. Show me to my house. And she's like, ooh, okay, damn. And the female embodiment of Scar from The Lion King over here is looking sus as hell. That happened right here. Picture the Christmas mornings around the tree. We oh God, the way he shut the door though. Ooh. Can you imagine? Like, damn, why? <laughs> anyway, so he just drops his clothes and she's like, <laughs> I love Lucy. She's like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgive me guys, I'm super tired. Everything with the hand-me-downs, an ice box, a blender, they, they even gave us. You know, when I first heard that noise, I thought it was his cane hitting the floor. Oh my god, stop. <laughs> so loggers were just getting to the point, right? Anyway, oh my god. I swear to god, this actor's only job is to just stand there. Stand there. They're like, you don't need a lot of lines. Just, it's like, what do I do? Just, just. Just stand, just stand and fuck, that's it. Oh, so what I already do? Yeah, just do that. Except we're just rolling the cameras and pretend we're not here. Nice. Okie dokie. Lucy. I love her so much. So they bang and she doesn't notice all the scars on his body because girl, I do not blame you. I probably wouldn't notice anything else either. This is probably, well, no, it's not her first time because she screwed around with her cousin. But still, he is all sliced up, but it doesn't matter. Meanwhile, her little brother, the jockey, I'm sorry, not the jockey, but someone who could be, goes into the other vault. Lucy and her bow are finished. He has a long keloid scar on his side, which means that he was gutted open at some point or something happened to him. Please don't ruin it. I'm expecting, like, no, don't. Why? Why ruin it? He gets up. And this is when the brother, in the meantime, finds out that the people who they have over in their vault are not nice people. They actually killed all the other people that were actually the vault members and probably ate them. So this guy is drinking like he has no manners and Lucy hears screaming. That's when she notices, oh, you're a raider. I don't know how they got in there, but they did. So of course they're fighting and I'm expecting them to pull a whole Mary Sue thing. How do you get his shorts back on so fast? Anyway. <laughs> Damn. At this point, I feel so bad for Lucy, but I'm invested in her because it makes sense that he's a dude and he's bigger than you that he'd be stronger. She's going to have to use her skill set or technique, but even still, it's hard. She probably has never had to fight anybody. And because I already like her character so much, I don't want anything to happen to her. And I'm like, please, please let her be okay. And uh, I thought she stabbed him, but he ends up stabbing her. She defends herself, but now she has a stab wound, which becomes barely an inconvenience for the rest of the episode. I don't know how, but she just acts like it's no thing. Like she has no organs. She's not worrying about blood loss. Maybe it's a thing she injected. I don't know. There's absolute pandemonium. The Raiders are so stupid though, because then why would you want to kill everyone? It just makes no sense. Props to the pregnant woman who ends up dying because she goes out like a boss. While all this is happening, Lucy goes to protect her cowardly brother. But oh no, Prince Charming wasn't dead. His jaw's just hanging off. And he could have easily killed her here. He could have snapped her neck, which makes me believe he didn't actually want to kill her or something. And all I'm thinking about in my stupid fan fiction head is, ooh, this is a potential love story. The time I got whisked away by a surface raider. And then she joins his harem and then becomes his main piece. And you know how those sappy romance stories always go. He's banging all the other girls. She doesn't like him. And then she ends up liking him anyway. And then he doesn't like all the other girls as much as he liked her. And now he only wants her. You know how it goes. That's just sells. That's how my mind was going. I'm like, ooh, there's money here. Anyway, the father saves her life. And instead of finishing him off with the shovel, he decides to drown him in the nearby barrel. I don't know why. Maybe because it's 
is neater. But then they are caught by female Scar. They hold some of the people hostage. He locks his daughter in this refrigerator thing and they shoot him several times with, I guess it's a trank dart. And they decide to take away her father. I don't know why. Then they're like, we have a bomb here. Do what you guys do best and run. They killed off everybody else. They decided to let these people get away. Okay. And I, wait, is that the pregnant woman? Oh my God, it's the pregnant woman. How is she still alive? I thought she died. Okay, well, that makes sense. I like her character. Well, she lost an eye, that's for sure. She's a badass though. So they get away. And I guess the bomb was enough just to make the others, the raiders, have time to escape, which is like, why leave these people alive? I don't know. And this was the best part of this episode because shortly after we are translated to this person and I'm not trying to be mean, but I really tried to like this character, but I cannot stand him. He's a whiny little brute. And I get that people are picking on him, but it's not like he's even likable. I've seen other cases where you have characters that are being picked on like Balto and they make you feel so sorry for them. But this guy, I don't know what it is. He's just such an unlikable character character to me. Gluteus Maximus. So then this, uh, dude is like a really good friend to him. Bro has like, are they supposed to be soldiers or something? The both of them, but this person is worse because y'all have no muscle. I know that food is scarce, but damn. These other dudes have muscle. So Gluteus Maximus is always being picked on, even by his superiors. They all say he's useless. She probably is. Everyone here looks rough as well. Then they see these bad costumed robots. And apparently these are like the elite people. I said, come on. Well, shit isn't going anywhere. <laughs> what is with these actors? So the both of them go into a hangar and, and he, he, I think, is like, look. So Jonathan Majors, Gluteus Maximus is like, oh. I remember seeing one of these things. This is so cool. Then Dane is called. They're caught. And Dane is like, oh, snap. It wasn't his fault. It was mine, bro. And they just ignore Gluteus Maximus. Why does he look like he aged 20 years in this scene? Jesus. Lighting really is everything. So apparently Maximus's best friend is going to be a squire to one of those robot dudes, which is apparently a really big honor. So let me understand this. This is a brotherhood, right? Why are there women in the brotherhood? I'm so confused. Isn't it called brotherhood because it's a hood of brothers? I don't even know who these people are, but at the moment, I'm not even really interested, to be honest. This is halfway through the episode one, and I'm just wondering, when are we gonna get back to Lucy? I wanna see Lucy's story. Again, I am new to the Fallout universe, so maybe this is something that they do in the games where they're following multiple people at the same time, and that's cool, but we went from a super interesting character to a super interesting situation she found herself in to these this and this idiot unlikable character throwing his temper tantrums because his horrible acting friend got a promotion then in the morning his best friend is like oh my god my leg someone put a razor blade in it so everyone automatically thinks it's gluteus maximus yay we cut back to lucy nobody wants to help her find her dad so she gets help from her cousin and her brother to break her out of the vault something that no one has done going to the outside and her brother is too scared to go with her so she's like it's okay the others try to dissuade her they're like come back bitch now, Lucy responds, no, I want to go to heaven. And then she gets outside and realizes, oh my God, this might've been a mistake. We see petrified people that this is probably a result of when the nukes had dropped, kind of like Pompeii. At least I'm, I'm guessing so. There's something very creepy and horrific about seeing people in the middle of dying. It's almost as though the bodies have themselves turned into concrete as well. <laughs> it's not funny. I don't know why I'm laughing. Her adventure is beginning and she says, okie dokie, which is her little tag phrase. And then we cut back to this character and I don't know why what is the relevance of this I'm sure there is some but I honestly am not interested the only thing that I was interested in in this entire portion or segment of this episode was where the hell have I seen this actor from the ambitions yes he always talks as though his face is vibrating and he's very unique yet I cannot for the life of me remember where I've seen him anyway since Gluteus Maximus is like I will do anything 
for the good of the Brotherhood. To which they replied, then you will be Knight Titus. Since his friend can't do it, I guess he'll do it instead. His friend seems like a decent person, and I don't know if that was done on purpose so that Gluteus Maximus could get the role rather than him, but it's kind of implied. But I still don't like Gluteus Maximus's character because he just seems to not care about anybody or anything. He's just vapid and uninteresting. So he's branded and sent off to be with the soldiers or to be their squire. And all he really wanted was some action. Yes, he can feel important now. Then we cut to another person. I feel like these should have been their own episodes, but then again, I don't think I could have sat through a whole entire episode with Gluteus Maximus back there. Sorry, but that would have bored me to tears. So we find out there's a mutant living within a cemetery. Someone's keeping him alive. They bring him out and it's the ghoul. The guy we saw in the beginning with the cute little girl, they were running away on horseback. He somehow survived, which means that he is old as hell, but yet still looks like how he looked minus his face missing because people were carving pieces off his face. I guess he's some kind of discount Deadpool in a way. And then the episode ends. So I'm going to be completely honest. Lucy's story is the only thing I liked about this. And aside from the fact that I really like the actor who plays the ghoul, there was nothing else of any consequence to me, but this is only episode one. I like Lucy enough to keep me coming back and the Southern actor, but I like how it started. I'm just not sure where it's going, but I'd like to see how the story continues. Episode one was good enough to make me at the very least somewhat interested that is until I found out that there's like a gruesome scene or two with a dog being killed. And one of the things we learned from Gluteus Maximus' story is that they have a target that they must acquire. And his dog, his companion, is also the target. So we're gonna be hunting a man and his dog. And then I find out that a dog died. Like I, that's the only reason why I haven't really watched episode two because I'm just not, I'm not looking forward to navigating that whole situation. That is a weakness for me. I just do not like watching watching dogs get killed on camera. I just cannot. So I'll finish the season and then come back with a season review to let you guys know what I think. Stay safe out there. I live inside my own world of make-believe. Kids screaming in the cradles, profanities. Some days I feel